to operate simply by instinct and the genetic code. In the winter, the goose flies south. How often? Answer, every winter. If you said to the goose, hey, it'd be better this year to go west, he ignores that advice. And the reason is because he cannot make choices and listen to advice of something that might be better. He has to obey instinct and the genetic code. But now jot this down, not human beings. Human beings can alter the course of their life. Human beings can live one way for five years, tear up that script, live a totally different way the next five years. The first six years of my economic life, I wound up broke. Second six years, I wound up rich. Someone says, how did you do that? Here's number one, I discovered I was not a goose. Someone says, don't you have to do the second six years like you did the first six years and jot this down? No. No, you don't have to live the second six years like the first six. You can use all the information and all the advice and repairing all of your mistakes and adopting a new and refined philosophy so that the next six years can be totally different than the last six. Are you letting your circumstances talk you out of what God put in your heart? Now you've quit believing. God still wants to bring it to pass, but you have to get in agreement with him and say, God, I still believe it can happen. The odds are against me, but I still believe I can accomplish my dream. I was raised in dysfunction, but I still believe I can set a new standard. Thoughts whispering, you'll never beat the right person. You can't pass that college course. If you start dwelling on it, these problems are so big. I don't see how it can work out. Before long, you'll be negative. Don't take the bait. Those are lies to try to defraud you out of your purpose. Do yourself a favor, ignore it. Just say, no thanks, I still believe. Faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. You can never lose faith. When you don't see no way how, you have to buckle down and keep believing. God is always coming. No other life form can do this. See, if you were a tree, you'd be stuck. As a tree, if you used up all the nourishment that was around you and you couldn't change location, see, you would die. But that's not true. Human beings can change location, go north, south, east, west, live here for a while, live somewhere else for a while. So that's a note to make. You can greatly alter the course of your life. Now, here's the next note to make. Five years from now, you will arrive. The question is where? This is for mature people now. If you keep up your present disciplines and keep up the present pace that you're on, where will you be in five years? Boy, it's easy to say, hey, I haven't really thought about that. So now make this note. In five years, here's the probability. You will either arrive at a well-designed destination or an undesigned destination. Well-designed or undesigned. And I promise you, five years from now, you, you really don't want to arrive at an undesigned destination. Because you may very well wind up wearing what you don't want to wear, driving what you don't want to drive, living where you don't want to live, maybe doing what you don't want to do, simply because you didn't design a better destination. Key phrase, up front, the decisions are easy. Now, sometimes after we've lived a few years now to repair our mistakes and get back on track, seems like a tough job. If you've messed up your health for 10 years, I'm telling you, it takes more than 10 days to get it back. But here's the key, and it's so exciting to talk to the teenagers. Make the note, if you start early, the fortune belongs to you. If you start early, all fortunes that are available to humans, if you start early, the promise looms large and the odds are heavy in your favor. Now, yes, it's possible to do some radical things starting late and still arrive with some good treasures and some good things. But when you haven't got that much time left, now sometimes the decision has to be so drastic people are not willing to make it and they're too tired and too weary and too ill and say, look, I don't have much time left. It's not going to happen for me anyway. It's easy to take that attitude. But everyone here, we've got the time over the next 10 years. We've got the time the next 20 years. We've got the time the next 30 years. 
to make some repair now in our errors of the past and set up some new disciplines. And I'm telling you, that's going to change everything. So five years from now, I wish for you to arrive at a well-designed place, a place of productivity, a place that'll make you feel good about yourself, a place that'll give you honor and respect, a place that'll give you influence to touch other people five years from now that you couldn't do today. Where will you be in five years? Key phrase, we go the direction we face. We go the direction we face. If you start designing something at the end of this direction, sure enough, you will start going the direction you face. And we face the direction we design. Don't get talked out of what you're believing for. You had every right to give up. The setback should have talked you out of it. You haven't seen any sign of things changing. All the facts say it's impossible. Your attitude is, that's okay. God can do the impossible. Don't get talked out of your dreams. The disappointment is not going to cause you to get discouraged. The people who don't believe in you is not going to dampen your faith. The environment you were raised in is not going to stop your destiny. Your time is coming. What God put in your heart is still on the way. Guess how quickly you can change your health by starting to eat an apple a day. Mama said an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Let's say you've been ill long enough and you've had health problems long enough and you say, that's it. That's over. I'm going to now start a program. You don't have to really revolutionize your whole health life. Just start with an apple a day. You say, well, is it that simple to change your health life? And the answer is yes. The key is just to start. You know, you pick up a book on good health and you get halfway through the book and it says, now, dear reader, set this book aside, fall down on the floor and see how many push-ups you can do. And then it goes on to say, and if you have not done that, why not give this book away? <laughs> It looks like you're not going to do it. Come on, you don't have to radically do something. You can gain momentum and make changes as you go. Just start. Here's what happens when you start a new direction. Self-esteem starts to accelerate. It doesn't take much for you to feel good about yourself. Just committed to a new direction and you feel good. And an apple a day committed to finally having a health program that'll make you the healthiest you've ever been in the next 20 years. All you got to do is munch on that first apple and nobody even has to be around you and you don't have to announce it to the world. But you munch on that first apple and say, this is the beginning of developing a health program that's going to make me so healthy. I'll have the vitality to do whatever I want to do for the next 30 years of my life. Munch, munch, happy, happy, self-esteem off the scale. Now. If you eat an apple the second day, you become almost delirious. Saying, wow, I'm on my way. Somebody said, just two apples? Says, look, you don't understand. Not only did I do it yesterday, I've done it again today. This is really proving to myself with no audience, no microphones, no nothing, just you and yourself. You've convinced yourself, I'm on my way to the healthiest I ever have been. I'm starting a new life. This is the second day I'm on my way. That's how easy it is to change your life. You don't need some dramatic vision. Just begin something. And maybe by health or by whatever other things we can think of to do, you just get back on a better track. Okay? It's a small journey to changing direction. We find ourselves when we discover our purpose. Nothing is better than for a person with a plan for his or her life to find themselves, find that purpose. It does not matter where you sit. It does not matter what you have, Lord. But if you don't have purpose in your bowels, you cannot do what God has called you to do. It's what makes you solid. It's what makes you secure. It's, it's your mooring. It keeps you just exactly where you need to be so that you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. To discover your purpose, to find yourself. What a, what a wonderful thing. That's what our subject is about today.
And if you don't have that tough tenacity, God-anointed, purpose-driven life, you will give up and walk away. But there are some of us that have nothing to walk away to. If it's fight, we just got to fight. We're like the woman with the issue of blood. If I have to crawl to get there, then I'm getting on my knees. I still got to go. But there's a second challenge. Once we find our purpose, discover why we're here, there's a second challenge that we have that we face, and that is to lose ourselves. And, and we lose ourselves when our purpose becomes bigger than us. It, to find a purpose, how important. But then to take that purpose and place it in a position with people that has eternal factors involved is to lose yourself and to go to another whole level of life and another level of living. Very few people find themselves and lose themselves. Place that purpose in a position that is so much bigger than us that we can literally lose ourselves in the process. In a time of change that's taking place around the world, in a time when people are feeling a great deal of anxiety and fear, and reservations about the future at a time when people are going to work and don't know whether or not they will have a job when they get off and not necessarily because of their performance but because of what's happening in the economy at a time when there are challenges more so than ever before in personal relationships that many times i'm sure that we've all taken time just to stop and reflect many times when we hear what's happening in the news or read the newspapers and so I think that now more than ever, we must begin to look at what are the things that we can do will enable us to do some things and use some powers that we have that many of us go through life never ever discovering that we have those things going for us. And part of that, I believe, is knowing what it is your life worth. What is it that gives your life a sense of meaning and purpose? Because once you find that, it puts you in your power place. See, if you know what your life work is, I encourage you to start working on it. If you can't do it all at one time, do just a little bit of it. And if you don't know what it is that you showed up to do, if you don't know why you're here, I encourage you to find out what your purpose is here. What is the meaning of your life? Once you identify it, you have to invest in it. You have to support it. You have to put yourself in an environment where you can shine. So the first question we have to ask ourselves this morning is how do we find ourselves? That's challenge number one. And we find ourselves by when we discover our purpose. The world is set so full of apathy. It's so full of average. A person with passion always stands out. It sets us apart. It sets us above the crowd. But once you have passion and once you have a, a sense of energy in your life, it just sets you apart. It distinguishes you. It already gives you what I would call a head start in success in life. There are way more followers in the world than there are leaders. Never assume people think of you the way you think of yourself. What perceptions are you creating? If you're going to put these negative perceptions out there about yourself, at least be conscious of. I'm saying that we have to work through the challenges of life in learning how to begin to work to fortify ourselves. I can live my dream. I can find my purpose in life. I deserve more for myself. Just start working at it just a little bit, but do find out what your work is and hold on to it and don't let your dream go. Don't let it go. Why is it that most people don't pursue their dreams or don't do better than what they're doing if they're capable of doing it? I think that many of us don't go the next step because we don't know what to do yet. And I say that, that the reason that we don't even explore the possibility of what to do is because subconsciously we don't believe that it can happen for us. We don't believe that we deserve it. So let's talk about it. Never assume people think of you when you think of yourself. Once you decide to put these perceptions out there in the universe, if you're not content with the way most of the people think of you, now you're on a mission to change those perceptions. When you change those perceptions, people are going to either decide to roll with you or not. You have been blessed with so many gifts and talents, natural gifts, that if you unleash everything that you're capable of doing on the world at one time, it's going to be overwhelming. It's going to be too much. You are a gift from God. You have so many talents. If you drop too much on people at one time, it's going to be overwhelming. 
There are going to be plenty of times in your life when you're not happy. There might be years. And so it's a shallow boat in a very rough ocean. Happiness is something that descends upon you. Everyone knows that. It comes upon you suddenly. And then you should be grateful for it because there's plenty of suffering. And if you happen to be happy, wonderful. Enjoy it. Be grateful for it. And maybe try to meditate on the reasons that it manifested itself because it, it can come as a mystery you know you, you don't necessarily know when you're going to be happy something surprising happens and delights you and you can analyze that you can think well i'm doing something right i'm in the right place right now i've done something right maybe i can hang on to that maybe i can learn from that what you should be pursuing instead is you should be pursuing who you could be that'd be the first thing it's like, because you're not who you could be, and you know it. You have guilt and shame and, and regret. You berate yourself for your lack of discipline and your procrastination and all your bad habits. You know perfectly well that you're not who you could be. And God only knows who you could be. And so that's how you should be strive. That's what you should be striving for. And associated with that, you should be attempting to formulate some conception of the highest good that you can conceive of that you can articulate because why not aim for that your life is short and it's troublesome and perhaps you need to do something worthwhile with it and if so then you should do the most worthwhile thing figure out what that is for you and to dispense with those parts of you that are unworthy and then maybe if you're fortunate and you do that carefully then happiness will descend upon you from time to time and that's the best you've got. And then also perhaps during sorrowful times, the fact that you've strengthened your character and that you're aiming at the highest that you can conceptualize, that'll give you the moral fortitude to endure without becoming corrupted during those times. So here's what I'm suggesting. How much time do you spend working on you? How much time do you spend every day working on your dream? In the last 90 days, how many books have you read? In the last year, what new skill or knowledge have you acquired? What kind of investment have you made in you? So I'm saying that as you begin to look at where you want to go, if you want to make it today, and things are changing so fast you have to literally run to stand still, I'm saying that you've got to make some conscious effort to begin to work to develop you. Freeman, I'm here to tell you there are a whole bunch of you out there. You're adding value to the dream of somebody that you're working with you're making a difference so your purpose may not be just for personal use it may be for corporate use or collective use it may be bigger than you does that make sense passion but the second question we ask ourselves is not only what am i passionate about but what are my strengths what am i good at what is my spiritual giftedness because when god created you he gave you gifts spiritual strengths to enable you to find and fulfill your purpose Disciplines undone in the future give us poor results. Discipline managed well gives us good results. We're affected by our dreams, our vision of the future. You want to make sure that the greatest pull on your life is the pull of the future. Some people live in the past and let their life be continually pulled and influenced by the past. And yes, we must remember the past and review the past to make it useful to invest in the future. Make sure that the greatest pull on your life is the pull of the future. If you're skimpy on your dreams, that isn't very well planned, then it doesn't pull very hard. Then you have more of a tendency to be pulled by the past or to be pulled apart by events or circumstances. So in order to save yourself from being pulled apart by distractions or pulled back to the past, you want to now start really designing the future so that the greatest part of your attention and pull, like a magnet, pulls you forward into the future to accomplish your goals. Goals are like a magnet. They pull, and the stronger they are, and the more purposeful they are, the bigger they are, the stronger they pull. If you have excellent goals, here's what they also do. They pull you through, pull you through all kinds of down days, down seasons. They pull you through distraction on every side. It says, look here, look here, look here. Strong, powerful dreams like a magnet pull you through that. Some people get swallowed by the disaster because they have nothing on the other side of the disaster to pull them through. At the other side of the difficult time, at the other side of the down time, if you've got plenty out there to attract and pull, it'll pull you through all these things. And very little of it will attach itself to you. You'll be able to get through some of the most difficult times if you have this spectacular vision ahead of you of where you're going and what you're going to accomplish. Getting through will be easy. God be for us, who can be against us? There's nothing in this world that can defeat us if God is for us. 
It is impossible to have victory and think bondage. It's impossible to be happy and think sadness and depression. You can pick up ideas that can change your life starting tomorrow. Just be a more careful observer. Now remember, there's two ways to see. One is called sight. The other one is called insight. See with your eyes, you'll see things. See with your mind, you'll see answers. Put your eyes and your mind to work. Don't miss anything. You've got to learn to zero in and concentrate. Wherever you are, be there. I'm encouraging you to be mindful and be deliberate of what you let in your mind. Be concerned about what's going on and do the things necessary that keeps you out of harm's way. But don't be consumed with it. So make up your mind to wake up with prayer, to watch something that inspire you, that lift you up. As you rethink your life in self-examination, this is time to look at the relationships in your life and ask the question, what kind of person am I becoming because of this relationship? Am I growing mentally and emotionally and spiritually? Am I becoming a better person because of this relationship? Is it an asset to me or a liability? And a lot of times, by the time people really get down to seeing who you really are, they run from you. What we really want is for somebody to love us for who we are. And what we really want is to have the kind of intimate relationship with them that allows us the freedom of not needing to camouflage who we are, what we think, how we speak, and how we understand. Without that freedom, we begin to be actors acting out a role in the house for which we eventually become weary of and we break out of the role because we want to be free to be ourselves. I think... Don't save that last bullet for yourself. You lock and load that last bullet and you shoot it at your head. And you keep fighting and you keep fighting no matter what. And you never quit. And if you feel like your life is in a place where you can't get any lower, good. Because that means the ultimate challenge is ahead of you. It means you can only go up. As long as God wakes you up, that means he ain't through with you yet. It's in our lives that we feel completely alone. We feel as though no one knows what we're going through. It is because of the uniqueness of the challenges that confront you are so unique to you that you feel like I'm up against it all by myself. It's an uphill battle. And along that road, you're not going to see too many friends. You're going to see your shadow most often. See, the thing is, for many people, they've tried the same path you're on, and they failed. As you walk this journey, you're going to see carcasses all over the place of people that didn't quite have it. Is that your success is like a spotlight shining down on their missed opportunities. Success, many will love you for it. The majority will hate you because your success reminds them of where they could have done it, but they came up short and how they didn't revisit it. The difference between a winner and a loser, the failure's there every single time. This is the winner gets back up and does it again until it goes his way. So now you're down that path and you're all alone. And generally, that type of circumstance is born because it's not because you don't have anybody to talk to, but can you trust them? Eventually, even the most disciplined amongst us, the corners of your mouth will droop down. Your smile will turn into a frown. Eventually, even if you have to wait till everybody's gone to sleep, a tear will run across the bridge of your nose because you're dealing with stuff that is so deep and so complicated that you feel like you're in it by yourself. But you are not alone in the battle. You're not alone in the struggle that God has a strategy. And when it's all over, you're going to see that even though you couldn't see him. He was there all the time. I promise you guys, if today you never say good enough, tomorrow you'll always have enough. What I'm saying is the character of who you are. The character defines the success, defines the fame, and it starts right there. Championships aren't won in the theater of the arena. 
They're one in the thousands of hours in the training room, in the labs, in the 5 a.m. runs, when everyone else is sleeping. That's when it's won. The Harvard champion is a light switch that's always on. It doesn't go on and off when someone's watching. It's constant. It begins right now with no one looking, man. And how you hold yourself, how you see yourself. What do you do when no one's watching? If you do it then, I guarantee you, you'll be doing it when everyone's watching. Your heart, your life, your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone. It's not your fault if your partner cheated and ruined your marriage, but it is for damn sure your responsibility to figure out how to take that pain and how to overcome that and build a happy life for yourself. As long as we're pointing the finger and stuck in whose fault something is, you're stuck in suffering. The road to power is in taking responsibility. Take full responsibility for what happens to you. Accepting full responsibility. It's the day you know you've passed from childhood to adulthood. Learn to reap in the fall without apology if you do well and without complaint if you don't. That's maturity. I used to have that long list of reasons why I wasn't doing well. I blame my negative relatives. They were always putting me down. I blame my cynical neighbors. They're just selfish, looking out for themselves. Won't loan you money? I used to blame the economy. I blame the community. That's a pretty good list for not doing well, isn't it? The road to power is in taking responsibility. Your heart, your life, your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone. Taking responsibility, accepting responsibility is not an admission of guilt. Taking responsibility is a recognition of the power that you seize when you stop blaming people. It's not like you're letting somebody who wronged you off the hook. Taking responsibility is taking your power back. A few months later, I learned very quickly to tear up my list, reasons for not doing well, and I threw it away. And I got me a fresh piece of paper, and I put one word on it. Me! There's a black heritage spiritual that says, it's not my mother, nor my father, nor my brother, nor my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not what happens, it's what you do. If anything can go wrong, it will. That's one of Murphy's laws. So here's one of the key questions of the evening. Starting tomorrow, what are you going to do that'll make a change in your life's direction? Now see, if you don't do something starting tomorrow that'll make a difference, guess what? Because the next five are going to be like the last five, unless you, major key, tomorrow, change it all. Or change a little, or change something, or don't change. It's choice time. You can do whatever you want. But it's nice to know any day you wish you can change your whole life. We go through the actions of commitment, but we're not really committed. We're not really connected. We're not really joined because we have no understanding of our responsibility to any relationship. You cannot have true relationship without reciprocity. You cannot get into a relationship to get and not give. You collect anniversaries, you've got a lot of birthdays, but you've never been the person that you could be because the could be is locked up behind commitment and until you're committed, you'll never get the could be. Wonder what would have happened in school if you'd been committed. Wonder what would have happened in your marriage if you'd have really thrown your whole self. You've always been casual. In what you've done with your life thus far, is it giving you what you want? Is it giving you what you want when you look toward the future, when you look at all that's going on out here? Is there some place within yourself you say, hey, I know I need to be out there in that arena. I know I can do more than what I've been doing. Is that something that you begin to look at within yourself? See, I say if you look at your life and if you're not getting what you want, you owe it to yourself to do something differently. You're on a job. 85% of Americans go to jobs that they're unhappy. If you're doing something eight hours a day that you don't like, it's not giving you what you want, it's not giving you a strong feeling of satisfaction and fulfillment. If that's what it is, you owe it to yourself to start strategically working to change directions. Most people will resist change. 
Most people will fight change as if change would be worse than what they're experiencing. Most people will not challenge the unknown. They won't just step out there. See, there are certain things that's got to be in place. They've got to see it all together. And life isn't like that. That's not how you grow. As you begin to look toward the future, begin to know that whatever it takes for you to create that, you got that. You've got genius in you, you've got goodness in you. If you decide to take the initiative to change the current quality of your life, I say to you that you will find that the universe is on your side. Would it be easy? No. Will you have some opposition? Yes. Will I make a lot of mistakes? Yes. See, a lot of people won't try anything different in life because they don't want to get hurt. Pain is everywhere. But most people spend their life not wanting to deal with the pain of rejection, the pain of being disappointed, the pain of being criticized, the pain, the pain. That's called life. But guess what? There's no gain without pain. If you don't know exactly what you want or you let yourself get beyond that into something general, you're not going to achieve it. Clarity is power. You've got to know the specific result you're after. What do you want? Why you're doing it? Because you know what? You may get a big goal. Sometimes I want to make a billion dollars. I want to bring peace to the earth. Why? Because as soon as you come up with a goal, all the obstacles show up. So you got to get yourself past that. And the way to get past that is have enough reasons. Reasons come first, answers come second. To ask intelligence, you got to know why you want it, have enough drive to make it happen, enough juice to make it happen. If you don't have enough reasons, you will not make it happen. What is going to get you to actually fall through? Because the first plan's not going to work and the second plan's going to work, so you better have enough plans. If the first two don't work, you still got something else. Otherwise, you're going to be having excuses why it didn't work. That's a pain. Don't you know that's something? When you know, I was in a seminar once and this lady stood up. If I had my life to live over again, she talked about all of the things that she would do. And you can feel the pain of regret in her voice. She was trying not to experience the pain of defeat, the pain of disappointment, the pain of loss. And she still experienced pain. It was right there. Most people are governed by their habits, their fears, and the opinions of others. A lot of people never try anything differently because they have been convinced by people in their lives that they value that they can't do it. They're living within the context of the opinions that other people have of them. The low expectations. Many people doubt themselves because when they thought about doing something at some critical point in their lives, somebody they respected and honored, someone they trusted said, you can't do that. And they accepted that.